G'day everyone, welcome to my fifth floss tube video. I'm Rach from Rara's, Rara's Realm, Dunclister, uh, and uh, I'm coming to you today from a very sunny, very northwest gale wind uh, part of the South Island of New Zealand. Um, if you've been watching from the beginning, today is an exciting day. Uh, I would suggest you put down all sharp objects and any hot drinks because I have two works in progress. Today is the beginning, in video sense, it actually started on the 1st of November, it's Sunday the 5th now. Um, today, well this video marks the beginning of multiple works in progress. Um, there will only still only be two, I imagine, between now and the end of the year when the new um, rotation plans will kick off on um, the 1st of January. So, um, before we get into those, I'd just like to welcome back people who are returning, um, who have been watching and subscribing, thank you, uh, and commenting, and uh, welcome any new people who have just found me, and um, I hope you enjoy um, what I'm showing, and uh, we'll stick around and see the madness that will begin in January. Okay, so without further ado, my main focus has been um, the Six Fat Snowmen from Lizzie Kate. Uh, I had put it down a couple of years ago when I was possibly sick of all the white, actually, and um, just didn't stitch again for a while until about a month ago. I actually looked at um, some of, I recorded all my um, purchases and right when I got back into stitching again, must have been back at the beginning of October, and I worked out that I've placed something like six orders in a month. Well, no, I've received six orders in a month, um, and I've got another three thing orders on the way to me. Anyway, um, so in the month that I've picked it up again, I've been working furiously to get this finished. So it's finished by the end of December, ready for a whole lot of new things to start in January and February. So I am doing the six snowmen, I'm doing them as one piece and because I haven't got my glasses on I can't tell if that's blurry for you or not. I might just put my glasses on. Um, anyway so that's I'm doing it as the one piece. I'm going to stick my glasses on because otherwise I won't know if what you're seeing is blurry or not. So this is the fourth block that I was working on and when I um, showed progress in the last video, which was about two weeks ago, I had got everything above my finger done, basically. Um, and I just have the snowflakes and the snow here to do. So I have, uh, let's put that out of the way, I have completed that block let's try and hold it taut for you so that block is now completely finished and I've moved on to you can just see the hint up there uh, block number five and if I just rejig my board a little bit and then I'll show you the whole thing so I've made a start um, up the top on that one um, this one has a lot of white in it too. I guess they all do, the snowmen. So, I don't know how well this is going to work with um, nothing really behind it. To sort of dull, but... So that's the edge just in there. And I've just got that edge slightly hidden. So that's where I'm at. I've got four complete blocks and I've got the two to go. Um, as I say, um, this, the aim is to have this finish and I can't see why not really. Um, I have made a second start and I, what I've decided to do for these two months is to practice my four day rot rotation which is what I'll be starting in January. So four days on one, four days on the other and I'll just churn through like that. Um, this is a close up of what block five will be when he's all done. 
So again, lots of white. So I think next time I sit down to do it, which may be a bit more today, it's only mid-afternoon here, or tomorrow, I'll do a lot of white. I think I'll spend a, a session on white, a session on colour, just to try and not end up with all the white at the end. Okay, I don't think I need that again. So, my second start is... Um, Santa's Village from Country Cottage Needleworks and I'm I primarily started it because I wanted to join in the stitch along that Vonna had started in the little house country cottage stitches group on Facebook. So I'm only working on block one, which is Santa's house. And once I've completed this block, even if it takes me two weeks. I'm not doing any more of that. That'll come up again in the rotation in January. I just want to do the first one and then I want to concentrate on the snowmen. So this is my progress after four days. So that is the extent of the block. Um, if you've watched the previous videos you'll know I've had some problems with fabric and what was ordered, because I kitted these up four years ago, um, ended up not being the right sizes for the projects that they were ordered for. But we worked out that if I cut, this was a, a double length piece, if I cut it in half I would fit this on it and um, another project. I did a sort of a measurement and there is certainly plenty of room across the top. I haven't worked out down here but the calculations say that it will be fine so I'm going to go with it. I'm thinking of doing it because I stitch in hand and it's probably easier to show with ooh, windy windy you, I don't know if you can hear that or not. Um, I tend to work right with my piece rolled up like that and just a little bit showing where I stitch. So I'm thinking probably, as an, using this as an example, is I'll do block one of Santa's Village, block five, and then five, five, six, seven, eight, block nine. So I'll work down and then roll up, move across, and then do the next um, column is probably how I'm going to do it. <sighs> we'll see. Um, this fabric, I thought the fabric for the snowman was really stiff, this is even stiffer and I'm sure once, um, you know, once I've been working on it long enough it will settle down, uh, um, but you know, I'm quite happy with it. The white, the chart called for, it just said white, what have I done with the piece of, oh no, it's all still packed away, can't get to it, um, it said white and uh, now I'm wondering if it was a specialty white rather than DMC I'm not sure I'll have to check again um, but I couldn't find at the local shop here they didn't have a white they had uh, Blanc and which I know is French for white and B5200 so I got, I knew I had the 5200 here, I got a Blanc, which turned out that I had one as well, we'll come to the DMC in a minute. Um, so I tried the Blanc first and I, it was just too pale on here, so I, I only did one column up here just to see. And then I did a column of the B5200 and I like that better. And it, on the video, actually, it is showing quite well. It is showing pretty good. So I think I'm happy with that. Chelsea and Priscilla have done their latest video this morning. And um, Chelsea's working on this. And her white shows up quite well. So I've actually asked her what she's using. Um, so before I get too far, I, I, I want to be sure. But I think I'm quite happy with that. I think... Um, I don't get too much glare in it. You can see it looks okay, I think. I'll check it back when I watch the video. So, two projects, people. Amazing. Um, I don't actually have a lot more, really, because I've just basically been working along on that. I think I did show you that, didn't I? So that's what it's going to be, the first block. 
vendor's house. I discovered, just goes to show that I, I, whether I checked it four years ago or not, I really don't know, but I thought that I had all the threads for this project, but in fact I only had the specialty threads for the project. I didn't have any of the DMC. It uses DMC and I don't can't remember which brand of specialty, but, you know, overdides it uses. So um, luckily, having done the little house neighbourhood a couple of years ago, I got a nice supply of DMC, not huge by any standard, but um, I was able to, from there I was able to get half of what I needed and then I went and got the other half um, from the shop. So I've got all the DMC, certainly I've got all the threads for the first block and then I'll look into the rest of it when it's time for it to come up next year. Um, I've also been working on kitting up. So this is one of the projects, the 13th Colony Bay is going to be one of my projects for next year so I've got some white to go with that. This is just a 28 count and I didn't write down the rest of the information because and they didn't do it I just um, went in to see what I could find. This was in the main shop in town so I've got the fabric for that. I still would need to get the threads but those are DMC and I can get them locally. Um, this is my small that I'll be working on next year which is the little freebie Live Simply by, where is it, Hands to Work. So I'm going to use, and I have no idea what this fabric is and I'm not even sure, I think it's 32 count. It's the other half from the previous video. Um, I showed the hands, no, the drawn thread houses and I had quite a long piece. So this is the other half of that fabric, which I think is a 32 count and I've pulled from my small stock of threads um, wild berries from Crescent Colours and I think, I don't know how well this is going to work out, I think that's going to look quite nice together. I'm just doing it in the one colour, um, I think that's all I've ever seen people do it in. It certainly doesn't, it's not charted for lots of colours and um, I don't know that I want to spend the time trying to figure it out. I like the idea of doing it in the one. So that's what I'm going to do with that. So that project is now ready to go when it comes up in week eight or so of the rotation. So that'll be February sometime. That'll go. And Hawk Run Hollow, I got, um, I've got a massive starting to collect threads again I had a good uh, everything that I already had I pulled out and shoved in here um, and then I'm just now going to work on gathering the rest um, I haven't got oh yes I have if I can find this relatively quickly I don't know how well you can see that those are all the colours in Hawk Run Hollow so and you can see all I've crossed off, <laughs> so I've got a fair way to go yet. But the local shop here, which is a quilting shop primarily, it's not a cross-stitch shop, it is a, a fabric shop, um, they have a, a deal whereby every tenth DMC you buy is free. So that will help. Anyway, so I've got fabric for that, and this is just a nice light. If I hold it up, I'll take that page out really. Um, Obviously here in New Zealand we don't have the range of fabrics that you can get in America and this call for, oh, I haven't got the right thing now, um, it's something like sand dune or, yeah, 40 count sand dune from Lakeside Linens. The, the um, craft shop in town in the big city that I went into certainly doesn't have a range of manufacturers of fabrics so um, this is a, as white as Vigart, I believe, um, and I think it's a fairly good match. It's a sort of a buttery cream colour, and I don't know how well it's going to show up against that. But looking 
at it compared to the picture, which isn't always the best indication. I do know. But I think that's a pretty good match. I'm quite happy with that. So oh, it's all falling on the floor. I'll deal with it later. So that's that. Oh, I didn't pull my haul out. Oh, well. There's only one thing. Um, I got... Ooh, sorry. Bit in your face there. Um, I've only had one parcel arrive this week, which was parts four, five, six, and seven from the Garden Series Club Blackbird Designs. And I ordered that from a different shop than 123 Stitches, who I've primarily been using. Um, and it actually worked out okay. Um, I was neither here nor there on it, to be perfectly honest. I'll probably just stick with 123 Stitch, um, which I have done. There's another order. I believe is in New Zealand, according to the tracking information. So uh, hopefully it might turn up in the post on Tuesday. We only get post Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday here in, in my part of the country nowadays, which is just ridiculous um, but you know the, the big cheeses can't make all the profits if they have to spend too much money can they um, anyway so I've got a one two three stitch order coming I discovered Kathy Barrick has her own Etsy shop so I've got two pieces coming from her that I hadn't seen on one two three stitch and I've just ordered something from Jen's Stitching Niche on Etsy as well, um, which is a Shakespeare's peddler piece that I saw, which leads me into a couple of channel recommendations. Um, Teresa from Shakespeare's Peddler um, has just put out her second floss tube video. She has got a couple of other videos, I believe, on her channel around miniatures, dollhouse miniatures, it looks like to me. I haven't actually looked at them, but sort of floss tube as we know it, she's got two videos out now. Um, and I have thoroughly enjoyed those. Um, I think she's a fountain of knowledge, and I think that um, watching her is a really interesting it's an interesting way to spend an hour um it's certainly i don't stitch when i watch floss tube anyway because i'm too busy writing things down um patterns and things like that um or etsy shops um so she certainly you would want to concentrate on her because i think you know she's really interesting um the other bonus for watching her and her name given in her name is kitten stitcher is that certainly in the first two videos there are cats over her shoulder here um, she's got a chair behind her and um, she I think in the first video I counted five cats altogether some are kittens she fosters kittens and um, in the second video I counted six cats and um, I had trouble focusing on what she was showing because I was watching what was going on back here as well um, very cute. So, uh, yes, I, I thoroughly recommend um, Kitten Stitcher if you haven't found her already. And the other channel that I want to, to shout out, recommend, is Heidi Cran, who is a Canadian stitcher. And she's shown, I, I'm up to date with her, I believe. So I've watched her right from the beginning. I think she's she's got less than 10 videos, I think. Um... But she's got some really beautiful pieces, pieces that she's working on or she's already completed. Um, and she's got some wonderful family heirlooms um, that have been stitched for her or her family members by both her grandparents. Not mothers, grandparents, grand, grandmother and grandfather. Um, so she's that's a really nice, she's a really... Um, nice channel to watch too. She's a teacher and it shows in the way she presents herself, unlike me bumbling along. Um, so, <coughs> excuse I. Yeah, I must, must remember not to get too close when I do that. The only other thing that I've done purchase-wise is gone down this realm. Previous to this box, 
I had been storing um, my um, floss that wasn't associated with a project in a, a shoebox, in envelopes in a shoebox, which was um, going okay, but I was finding that some of my, the DMC when I was pulling it was tangling, and I realised, I, I read something somewhere, probably in Stitchmania, about that you pull it from the longer end of the, you know, you've got two tags on the skein, you pull it from the longer end, so probably that's part of the reason that I've had problems, because I just, whichever bit is free, I start pulling. Um, so I've decided to enter the realm of bobbinating. So this um, little collection is stuff that's not associated with the project at this point in time. Um, I, as I, as you saw with this, I just, this is how I normally sort of work. I put my, um, the floss I'm using into the bag with the project. So what I will do over time is I need to find some other boxes, either some more of these, although I think these are too big for a single project. Um, somebody who was an Australian I watch, and I, I can't tell you who it was now, um, and it might have been to do with floss storage anyway, rather than a straight floss tube video, had a smaller box that she had got, um, I think she said Spotlight. So I'm hoping because she got that in Spotlight in Australia, there should be some in Spotlight here in New Zealand. So I will do a little bit of a recce um, before I look at having to use this side and maybe one half is one project and one half is the other project. Um, I did ask about this on Stitch Mania, if you may have seen that post, and someone <laughs> directed me to Amazon.com and the big double-sided floss box that people use sort of as their master um, storage and uh, it certainly was a reasonable price. I'm not sure if actually it's saying that, if that was in US dollars or New Zealand dollars, I'm not sure, but it said this item will ship to New Zealand. So I haven't ordered it yet. I will see what's at Spotlight, and we have another Australasian um, craft store called Lynn Craft. I'll check those out. Um, and probably actually hands as well, which is the sort of the main or the independent craft store we have here. I'll have a look at what they've all got before I look at joining Amazon.com and start ordering those sorts of things. Because once I sign on to Amazon.com, the books will start to flow. And I need another book like I need a whole head. So, while well, she was very sweet to show me, it was like, oh no, not Amazon. It was my favourite thing in England. I quite often got Amazon boxes. Anyway. And that's about it. And just sorting everything out. I've just made a little notions box. This was a tin of chocolates I brought when I was in Switzerland four years ago. And it's just the right size. It's got some scissors. It's got the pen I'm using to label the bobbins. I also, when I was getting some things, I got some new needles. Um, I thought with all the um, new projects I probably want a needle a project so I had a wee look and this said cross stitch so I got these five for three dollars which is fine and um, it's a really nice needle I mean I'm by no means um, I can't even say, I don't know many needles, let's put it that way. Um, the one I've got that I have been using is a much bigger needle than this, but I'm finding this a really nice needle to use. So um, there's only five in a pack. I'll need to get another pack because I'll have eight projects. And um, yeah, I really like those. I was going to order a pack of those, um, was it Bonin, Bonin? That people talk about. I was going to next order from 123 Stitch. I was going to throw a pack of those in and have a look. But in actual fact, I, I'm quite happy with these. So I think, unless somebody in the comments goes, Oh my god, no, they're horrible, don't use them. Um, 
and gives me a valid reason why, I probably would just stick with these. Uh, I don't think I could do any better ordering from America at that price. So um, that's that. I was just going to ask one question. Um, I am binge watching probably isn't quite the right word but I'm catching up on Vonna's videos I've sort of seen her later ones and now I'm starting back at the beginning going forward and she's shown how she stores her uh, overdyed um, floss weeks you know crescent colors gentle arts those sorts of things which is I think quite a cool way that she's doing it but I don't need that comprehensive a system at this point in time at the moment what I have done is just sort of wound them up so if I can do this without falling and you can see the light so DMC 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 that's an over dyed in that long compartment because the tags are too big and then these are that's all the weeks I think that one is and then crescent colors down here how do you store your over dyes um, do you have a box for them? Do you use the floss away bags? Um, any information on that sort of thing would be really cool if you could put in the comments. Um, I think that's about it actually. Uh, I hope you've got over the shock of two works in progress. Uh, it'll stay that way now for the rest of the year. I did, as a lot of people did, sign up to a newsletter from the, a store in the Netherlands who... Um, I think very cleverly posted in the Blackbird Designs Facebook group because uh, there was a free a freebie Blackbird's design in, included in the newsletter. So I'm kind of toying with if if things with these two projects move along quite nicely, I might look at doing that little freebie. But um, I'm not going to bust a gut because snowmen are the priority. I want to get them done and then be organized with my first lots of um, projects for January. Anyway, I can't believe I've waffled on for almost 28 minutes. I didn't think it would be this long, but that's me. I'm a waffler. Okay, I'm going to love you and leave you. Uh, next time you see me, I will be old. Um, I've only got it's the 5th of November. Two more days in my 40s. On Tuesday, it all changes. I never thought I'd get to 50. I never, I just can't believe that that's how old I'm going to be. But anyway, on Tuesday is the big 5 0. So uh, if you don't recognize me because all the grey in two weeks' time, you'll know why. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I shall love you and leave you. Enjoy your stitching. Continue to churn out the floss tube videos if you do. I love them. Uh, my cat and I watch them pretty much every night. We don't watch much else in the evenings anymore. Um, and I shall leave you from a lovely sunny, albeit blustery, Norwest day in the South Island of New Zealand. Take care for now and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye-bye.